Doug Walter is an architect of 43 years, but more recently, he's also taken on the title of lighting subject matter expert as he works to develop lighting curriculum and to rewrite kitchen and bath design guidelines for NKBA and IES. For years, he's studied the rise of human-centric lighting in commercial spaces like offices and hospitals, and even though that trend has yet to spill over into the residential sector, he says that its time is coming soon. And as I mentioned, as we were chatting, you know, so we're settling back in after the 2022 International Builders Show, and we're going over a lot of the trends that were taking place um, at this year's displays and in the products as well. So one that really stood out to me is the rising popularity of human-centric lighting. So can you describe sort of what that is and how it goes hand in hand with health and wellness in the home? Uh, human-centric lighting, also known as circadian lighting or tunable lighting, um, is an attempt by lighting manufacturers to recreate the beneficial spectrum of light from sunlight. Uh, sunlight is the gold standard. It has a full spectrum in pretty much every color. Um, any electric light out there uh, does not have a full spectrum. It's got a very spiky uh, spectral power distribution chart. Um, and this all stems back to the fact that it was really just about 22 years ago, they discovered their retinal ganglion cells in the back of the retina have nothing to do with vision. But what they do is they send the signals to the inside of the brain, which then sends signals to every gland in your body and all your hormones. So it regulates your biology. And the particular parts of the spectrum that were most uh, involved in this are the blue ends, the, the 480 to 510 nanometer, and kind of the yellow red end, which is kind of the afternoon, evening sun kind of thing. Um, and it's important for humans to get that dose of blue light in the morning to kind of get the cortisol flowing, uh, suppress the melatonin, um, and get their whole circadian rhythm uh, entrained. It's interesting, you know, there's so many non-visual effects of lighting that you might not initially think about. And it, I think it really shows that the term human-centric lighting, it has to go beyond manufacturing then and be something that's really rooted in science. So why do you think that this specific type of home lighting is kind of garnering more interest now um, in the commercial world? And you know, as you said, it's sort of slowly catching on in the residential world as well. Why do you think that is? Um, having suffered through two years of COVID, everyone is extremely interested in their own well-being and their health. Mm -hmm. And anything we can do to improve that is uh, of great interest. You said, you know, human-centric lighting and all of this different, this newer technology, it hasn't quite made its way into the residential world yet. But do you think that all of these different aspects of lighting are are for everyone whenever it does make its way into the residential world? Is it something you would recommend even to people who live in sunny climates with no shortage of natural light? Who benefits the most in your opinion? You know, we've been living under light that doesn't support human growth and development for years. I mean, uh, fluorescent lighting for the most part was 3,500 to 4,000 Kelvin. You know, that sickly green color, mm -hmm. um, you know, and th th who knows what kind of damage that is done to people's biology. Right. So yes, I, I would want to see this as kind of the standard. Um, you know, I talked about sunlight um, as being unique in its ability to deliver the full spectrum um, to the eye and to the skin. I mean, that's one of the major sources of, uh, of vitamin D is your skin. Um, and vitamin D is proven very important in resisting uh, COVID. So uh, again, another benefit for getting outside. Where do you see human-centric lighting headed in the coming years? How long do you think it'll take to catch on to the residential world? Oh, I think, uh, again, I, I keep throwing out five years. I had watched the evolution of LEDs. I've been, they've been on my radar since uh, probably late 90s, uh, but it wasn't until about 2012, 2013 that they started to become widely available and we could start spec them. And, you know, I haven't specced a fluorescent light since 2010, I think. Uh, they're obsolete. There's no reason that one would ever want to spec one. Uh, LEDs are much longer lasting, a better quality of light, uh, more resistant to uh, vibration and to cold than fluorescent. So there, there's just no reason. And they have no mercury. They also have no ultraviolet. Uh, a lot of benefits to LEDs. 